Well, good evening from Berlin, where it's uh, 9.30 p.m. Um, here in Berlin, I've been covering um, um, the coronavirus pandemic for the last uh, uh, seven, eight months. My name is Rick Moyk. I'm a, a foreign affairs reporter with the Washington Post. Um, and one of the questions that has repeatedly come up um, has been how our behavior throughout this pandemic has changed um, in various ways. But one of the most obvious ways, obviously, is uh, consumer behavior um, and uh, decisions, for instance, whether you know people can go to uh, soccer matches, uh, whether they can attend um, uh, events, whether they can spend their money. And that's what we're here to discuss tonight. Um, how has the pandemic changed consumer behavior? What have we, what have we learned over the last uh, few months? And um, how is it going to perhaps trigger long-lasting impacts and effects? Um, what are things that might stay with us for for some time, perhaps uh, for, for years or decades? Uh, we have a great panel. Um, here tonight, um, three of our panelists are already here. We're still waiting for two more, but I would like um, everyone to just say a few words about your background, what kind of perspective you're bringing to this. And also, because I think that's really crucial, what the coronavirus situation in your country is like and to what extent that's impacted your businesses and your perspective on it. Um, Maybe, Carsten, we can start with you because you're joining us from uh, quite, um, you know, <laughs> a relatively remote uh, country, right? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm coming from Greenland and uh, I'm committed to contribute knowledge uh, and representation from the Arctic. Uh, in my region, the Arctic, extra effort are needed to mitigate the fallout of the coronavirus. Uh, both short and long term. Uh, my experience come from uh, heading Greenland Holding. It's the state investment and venture fund uh, charged to creating growth to maintain and develop Greenlandic society. I'm also chairman of the board of Pacific Greenland's largest retail uh, chain, and I'm also deputy chairman of the University of Greenland. In this line, uh, my I have three main points are, first of all, we have to learn from each other. That's very important. And second of all, our behaviors, consumers are vital, not only uh, to companies and industries, but also to the whole communities, society and countries. And third, we must decide to act to increase cooperation and investment to uh, overcome coronavirus fallouts. Uh, this goes for individual as well as uh, for uh, the companies and countries. If we uh, were talking about the, if I take the second concerning how the impact is in Greenland concerning the coronavirus, uh, consumers' behaviors is vital to the future. Here in Greenland, we rely on three industries only, fishery and growing tourism and emerging raw material sector. The fishery export has been somehow affected. Tourism has almost, uh, is almost down to zero. Uh, for the mining sector, investment has slowed down or dried out. So the consequences are severe here in Greenland and we have to address it. As society, we must imply customers to act responsibly and look forward on a long term. As individuals, we have to do so. We are connected and consumers' behaviors is vital to the future, not only to specify company and industries, but to societies and countries. Great. Um, that, that was really interesting, especially um, the what you also said about tourism. I mean, this uh, drastic impact on, on one business sector. I think we're going to talk a bit more about that later on. Um, Sunday, um, would you mind yes. introducing yourself and, and saying a few things about um, what kind of perspective you're bringing to this and um, how you think um, this pandemic is shaping consumer behavior? Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me on this panel. I'm really opportune and I thank God for keeping us alive 
to be here today. I'm uh, Prince Sunday Adeojo. I'm born into one of the four ruling royal families in Ileife, Nigeria. And at the moment, I'm the vice president of Biodry to Energy, and at the same time, the chairman of the World Global Concern. My activities in this company is to look over the management, of course, the finance, which is very important. We are really having difficulties also ourselves, and also looking at the relation. And Biodry to Energy transform waste into valuable resources, such as uh, raw materials, like uh, fertilizer, fertilizer very important, and uh, cement, also cement which is new, and also fuel for electricity. We also, we are also in the sectors of uh, water, water, we provide jobs in the areas where we are based, it's a difficult uh, branch. And at this moment, uh, I'm living at this moment in Switzerland. I'm in Switzerland, just 40 minutes away from Zurich. I know everybody knew Zurich. <laughs> and the impact of Corona, uh, I would say Corona tsunami, because for me, it's tsunami. Because the whole world was caught unaware because we thought uh, actually uh, this pandemic is just like Ebola, regional. But when it came, it bounced on every one of us, catch us unaware, we are unprepared, and it has set the whole world aflame in a kind of a jeopardy. And uh, my own thought about this is, here in Switzerland, is a very small country, we are about 7 million, but around us we have Austria, it's also about seven point something million. On the other side, you have the big Germans, the Germany. It's about, you know, 80 million. Rick is there. And on the other side, we have France and Italy. So I'm just two and a half hours away from my land. So the problem here in Switzerland is not so devastating like other places. And that's why here in Switzerland, we are not enforced to wear the mask. At the beginning, they said, if you want, you can put on the mask. But the, the measures that the government applied was they tried to minimize the, 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 the number of people coming together, which really helps. And then before the people knew what is happening, we have the shutdown. Uh, so as a small country, you just everybody, everybody was locked down in his home, in his house. The streets were empty. And for the for, for, for the for the wildlife, they came out making party. I saw uh, I saw animals on the street. You never see them before, coming out of their hidden places. So it's a kind of a victory for for for, for the nature. But for we human beings, it, it it was a really tough time. Now talking about the waste sector, uh, we have problem Rick, because these uh, measures that we are taking, mask and the gloves that we are using to prevent actually the COVID is coming back to us in the waste industry sectors. And now you can see fears in the eyes of all those workers because actually you are dealing with things that you actually knew when you touch, you might be also infected. So you see fears in the eyes of some of the workers, you see panic because this pandemic has as, as hit us like a, like a, like a tsunami, and uh, it has really changed our world. My, my, my prayer is uh, that we should come together, the whole world should come together, put hands together so that we can walk together, so that we can hit or take off this pandemic as soon as possible. Okay. Thanks so much, Sunday. Um, Jibrian, um, would you like to say a few words about uh, the, the kind of perspective you're bringing to this? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, it's a very good and interesting panel, and uh, I think that the subject that we discussed is very important um, now and in the future too, because uh, we must separate two different things. That is the behavior during the pandemic and what the behavior will be after the pandemic. 
Before I want to say a few words about me, like my colleagues did. So I am um, in the management team of uh, a group of companies from Romania, based in Transylvania. Most people know better about Transylvania, the land of Dracula. Uh, of course, uh, I am only from the land of Dracula, and I'm not Dracula, so nobody has to worry at all about this. I can tell you that um, in our group of businesses, we are involved in more business lines. One, um, this is the company that I am registered with. It's Autonova. Uh, this activates in the business of uh, uh, developing products for automotive and non-automotive industry in uh, mass production conditions. The second business is in construction. The third is in investment, in financial investments. And the fourth is in consultancy. Uh, during my life, I um, have been very, very involved in representing companies internationally. And uh, I traveled a lot, absolutely a lot. And I really miss traveling a lot. And I hope as soon as possible, it will be again possible for me to go uh, all over the world as I was used to. I am a member of the Adam Global, which is a network of professionals based in Dubai and registered in London. I am a member for Europe of the Asia CEO community, Hong Kong. And uh, I am the member of the European Committee since uh, last month when I was appointed uh, in this position. I'm also involved in managing some business associations here. And we are very, very active on the German-Romanian Business Association and uh, the National Companies Association from Romania, where I am president here in the northwest part of Romania. About the COVID situation, well, really this situation was something unexpected, and because the people were not ex expecting to uh, be such a quick spread all over the world, uh, the uh, people entered in a state of panic at the beginning, uh, I can tell you a small story. I think it's very interesting because um, as we saw that the people are totally panicked, we decided to personally discuss with them outdoor, of course, because we started to respect this kind of protection measures. And uh, we have uh, hundreds of workers here. And I wanted personally to discuss with all of them. Uh, during the day, nobody told me anything. But when it was night, one of the, let's say, colleagues, told me that uh, they are so afraid and uh, actually the lockdown happens not because the government took the decision, but because they feel locked down with fear in their hearts. And they are fearing about the future of their kids, about the future of their safety of job, about the future of their life. So the people were extremely scared at the beginning. And I told them that uh, the panic should stop from their side. We must go forward and we must do anything to be okay for all of us. And these things can done, be done only if we are working together, including in respecting those decisions that now it's a new normality for us to wear masks when we go indoor, for example, to wear gloves, to use that uh, sanitary products to clean our hands and try not to kiss ourselves because Romanians are letting people quickly, uh, they shake hands quickly, they uh, kiss each other and uh, they like to interact very close one to each other. Now it's not time for this kind of uh, behavior and this behavior changed. Uh, this is something that will remain changed even after the pandemic for a few years, but of course not forever. That's that's great. Thanks so much for, for those insights. I, I think what's quite quite obvious is that uh, the experiences we're discussing here tonight are very much um, shaped um, by a European sort of perspective on it. Um, I, I think that's partially because uh, we're missing two of our panelists who um, would have brought a little more of a, an American perspective as well. But I think that's worth keeping in mind for us. I'm, one thing I think all of you mentioned one way or another was the traveling aspect, um, you know, moving around. Um, Carsten, you said tourism has basically plunged almost to zero. Um, how, I mean, how has that 
um, what kind of impact has that had? Um, or what are companies doing that, that were fully relying on, on, on that sort of um, income? But also, um, what does it mean for Greenlanders themselves? Um, you know, and obviously, they also can't really go uh, abroad. Uh, how is that changing consumer behavior in, in Greenland? Well, concerning the tourism part, uh, back in March, uh, when the coronavirus uh, started, we very quickly uh, had a completely locked down here in Greenland. So you, could, you couldn't travel between Greenland and the rest of the world. You, you should see it in this perspective that w when you look at our globus, you can see Greenland is a very big island. It's 2.4 square kilometers, a million Square kilometers big, uh, but we are only 56,000 people and we are in small communities. So we are very, um, if the virus come here to Greenland, it could affect us uh, very hard. So we um, had a lockdown and then we um, introduced a, a period of five <laughs> days on, until 14 days of quarantine. So it, it would, it became very difficult for tourists to come to Greenland. So most of them, uh, well, they just uh, stopped and uh, uh, annulled their, their, their traveling here to Greenland. And of course, it affected uh, the, the, the businesses that are 100% uh, uh, depending on the income from the tourism. Uh, but the government of Greenland also introduced some packages where you can... Uh, apply for, for help if you um, had a lack of income and it has helped uh, most of the, uh, the small businesses uh, but uh, in the long term I think it will affect us very much we will see um, a decline for I think many years uh, to come until we have a, um, a what do you call it um, uh, and anti-virus uh, <laughs> um, vaccine, I guess. Yeah, vaccine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but also, we are very, well, I can think, as you said, um, uh, Antonova, uh, what, Capri? Uh, Ciprian? Antonova, yeah. Yes, uh, as you said, the people are very afraid up here because when we are so isolated, uh, we, we can say that uh, the, the biggest uh, force that we have to be uh, off coronavirus is, of course, that we are isolated. But also, that's our biggest, what do you call it, it's kind of enemy, that if we got a coronavirus here into Greenland, it could uh, spread very fast. And our... Uh, uh, hospital hasn't uh, a big capacity to to cope with uh, more than five to ten uh, who had uh, been affected with the coronavirus. But concerning the uh, the long term effect, uh, I, I think it would be, be you can see I'm I'm at a, at a hotel here in Greenland, which it's very popular. Normally it will be full of people. I think we are five or ten. Normally there will be yeah, two hundred people. So here in Greenland, it, uh, in the tourism sector, it has affected us uh, very hard. And I, 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 I'm not sure that it will be something that we will see a solution within months. It will, I think it will take years before we are up to. It will be a new order of some kind. Just a quick follow-up question to that. Um, is there Are there any... Um, business owners in, in Greenland who actually think this could have a positive impact in the long run, that, for instance, tourism becomes more sustainable, that sort of the, the um, you know, the things we've experienced um, make us think more about what we really need and what we don't need. Is that at all something that's being discussed? It's been discussed, yes. And I also think that um, COVID-19 has also taking some good things with it, if I can, may say so. Uh, we can see that uh, the uh, uh, the innovation thinking has been very uh, high uh, in the uh, in the also in this industry. We can see that um, 
we can attract perhaps tourism here to Greenland because it's uh, it's small and it's we are not so crowded and so on. So I think this part we can use in some kind of uh, developing the, the the future tourism here in Greenland. Okay, great. Ciprian, I, I'd like to talk a little bit more about kind of um, industries such as the the motor or car industry. I mean, what kind of impact are you seeing in terms of um, consumer behavior um, over the over the last year? So during the pandemic, it was clear that uh, taking into example the automotive industry, it was a totally hit industry worldwide. Uh, actually, all the big car producers stopped their activity, and uh, as a, a consequence, a lot of companies involved in this huge international industry had to stop their activity. Uh, in our case, we also had the same situation because we had to stop the production of uh, parts that uh, we are delivering for the Renault European brand, for example, But we also have clients which uh, pr have cars in, in uh, produce cars in China, and uh, we are delivering, for example, to them some parts for the gearbox. And uh, after the China uh, succeeded to control the pandemic, the economy and the industry started again to work. And now in that area, and it's a huge market, things are going on the normal direction, but not as better as it was before. In the future, in the automotive industry, something is very clear. All the people will need cars. Uh, hopefully, and I really hope this will happen, in the future, more and more people in the world will enter that part of middle class and we will have less and less poor people worldwide. And this means that everybody will need car, but the preference of people will switch from normal gas or diesel cars to hybrid or electric cars in the future. Another important thing that I saw and I discussed with other managers from companies is that they have some surveys that show that people will prepare in, prefer in the future smaller cars instead of big cars like in some parts of the world still have as preference. But the most important thing is that in the future, the energy that will be used for uh, moving the cars will be switched to the electric or at least the hybrid cars instead of uh, classic uh, gas or diesel engines that we are using now. And this is very good because in the future, everybody will have to take care about the uh, environment, about the climate of, of the world. And I think this is something that will have to be changed in the uh, behavior of the governments because there is too much talking about this important goal of the humanity, but sometimes there are too many negotiations and the results are not always the best ones, at least until this moment. So this is actually one of the things that I wanted to point out, that in the behavior that will uh, be very visible After the pandemic, I think that the governments will have in their core activity a real approach of the protection of the climate, of controlling the, the, global, uh, the, the, the global rise of the average temperatures. And this should be made by all the countries, by all the governments, and with the involvement of all the international uh, institutions like is the United Nations. And uh, it's very important not only for our generation, but this is also important for the future generations that will come after after us. That, that's really interesting what, what you're saying. I guess the argument behind that is also that sort of the, um, the, the destruction of biodiversity and, and climate change are all sort of part of the same equation, right? If you destroy biodiversity, you... Um, might trigger new pandemics, right? Is that essentially what you're saying, that consumers are deliberately starting to think about those um, links and that they're, um, that they're going to force um, those topics onto the agenda as a result of, of this pandemic? Yes, it is also a result uh, which will be uh, on the number one priority for the governments because of the uh, consumers. 
because during this pandemic, uh, everybody said okay. that uh, people started to discuss more and more about the uh, the, the environment and uh, these discussions for the simple persons started because everybody knew that we have to have a very good, very fresh air. Uh, and everybody saw what happened when it was the lockdown in different countries. There were all kinds of measurements about uh, the pollution in different huge cities. And we know that in Asia, in some uh, megalopolis cities, we have huge pollution. And after it was the lockdown, the air became cleaner and cleaner. And everybody no noticed that. And because of this, uh, all the people realized that we need to have a very healthy air we need to have a very healthy environment for the safety of us and of the children that will come after us in in, in this world and it's a very important goal because uh, this is not something that we must just discuss but we must act it's about also uh, connected to the safety and to the healthy of persons living in this world Sunday, um, you, you yes. also come from a sort of um, sustainability background. W would you agree with what uh, Tupriyan just said? Sure, sure. I, I, I buy your ideas and I agree with you totally because uh, COVID is bad, but we have also the good side of COVID. As you said, for the first time in history, during the lockdown, we have in Venedig, the water was so pure. It was on news. The water was so pure, crystal clear. And uh, according to research, also the air we breathe in, especially in all those crowded cities like uh, China, Hong Kong, Brazil, everywhere, people were talking. It's so fine. You can see even from from the leaf, from the from the leaf, from from the leaf, you can see some impact of of uh, of of a, of, kind of a new living, and you saw even animals that you can you can never find on the street before coming out of their hidden places because it's so pure. Around me in Switzerland, here we have a the water. There, the water sometimes is brown. For the first time, this water is so crystal clean that you can even see at least two meters down into the into the bottom of the water. So that is the positive side of COVID. And as you are saying that uh, we need small cars. Actually in Switzerland here, people drive big cars, but now people are now seeing that the essence of using small cars is also very important. Because one, because of the parking spaces, which is very important when you are in big cities, it's easier for you to park your car, but that is not the most important thing. The most important thing is people are now realizing that we need also to contribute into this climate change, which is happening now to get small cars, electric cars. And now government are awakening, trying also to pump in money, to put in money into the development of batteries. In my sectors now, we are trying now to use waste we are trying to develop a new, actually it's not a new system. We are trying to use this waste now, as I said before, into uh, producing electric city. And that's why we talk to also to the cement factories, because this waste, you can also use it as a kind of a form. Instead of going places, destroying grounds, you can use this waste also for cement. That's why we brought up this technique using the waste also for cement. Because in this new generation, I would say we are, we have to do something for the future. It's not about us alone. As you said, Cipran, it's about our future children coming up. We have to do something for them. Because if we cannot handle this thing now, there will be a lost generation. And it's going to be a big problem. It's going to be a big problem. So I think we need to invest most of our time, our technology in developing something real, real good, tangible, which we can at least use now. We have the technique. We can do that. So I think we should try to invest because some people are complaining that during the lockdown, the climate is perfect because there are less cars on the road. Everything is good. And now they said, okay, the government dropped the issue of climate change. They push it aside. 
And now they are complaining now when everybody is back to work, many cars are already on the road again, pollution is everywhere again, what do we do? So I think we should stop going left and back. We should try to make a, a decision. And that decision should come from the top to encourage people to go on electric uh, cars. That's, that's, and, that's really interesting, actually. That that point, um, the the point you just made, um, because because I hear all your optimism, but um, at the same time, isn't there a risk that we're all going to go back to the patterns um, we sort of were in prior to this pandemic? Uh, once this is all over, I mean, I am here in Germany. Um, the uh, the the peak of this crisis was over quite quickly, and what I've seen this summer is. Um, people, you know, pretty much returning to normality in, in many ways. Uh, Berlin, for instance, never had real uh, cash-free payment systems, and it still doesn't, oh. even though obviously this would have been a great idea to change in this pandemic, um, some would argue. But isn't that sort of a, a symbol, um, or couldn't that be a symbol for, for how actually maybe we're not actually really going to change that much after this is all over? But it, to what extent... Do you think that assertion is justified or not? Um, Carsten, maybe we'll start with you. Well, well here in Greenland, uh, we can take the experience of the COVID-19 that uh, we have to be more independent in that line that uh, nearly everything that we use in Greenland, we have to import it. Also, um, carbon hybrids, uh, oils. So we are trying to stimulate, the government are trying to stimulate electrification. Um, if you buy a hybrid plug-in or a, a 100% electric cars, they are completely tax-free in Greenland at the moment. And we are now, we are building uh, hydro uh, plants. Uh, more than 70% of the power consumed in your house to light and to uh, heat up your houses are coming from um, sustainable energy sources like uh, hydro energies. And uh, I think that we will work much more in that line to, to get more independent for that. Because we can see if you're looking at the, the risk that they are concerning import is that uh, the supply chains collapse due to the pandemic. And so it's a big risk, especially when you're living here, that it's sometimes 30 or 40 below in the in the winter times. So it can hit us very hard. Hmm. Um, Triprian, what, what, what are your thoughts on it? It's, uh, it's interesting, but I would like to point something I think very important uh, from my side about the uh, future behavior changes that uh, will happen. And I would like to make this, including what we discussed already in the context, that um, uh, mostly in the Western world, uh, before the pandemic, the economic uh, issues were above the social issues. When the pandemic came so quickly and everybody uh, was confused about what's happening, then quickly the social uh, uh, things uh, became more important than the economic ones, and this is why happened the lockdown in many countries. What will happen now will be a balance between those two things, no matter of the country, no matter of the regime, no matter of the party which is ruling that country, but there will be an equilibrium between the uh, economic uh, issues and, uh, of course, the social issues which uh, represent, for example, the importance for the healthcare system, the importance of the educational system of all the levels, starting with the kindergarten until the universities, because these things are very, very important. And uh, from my point of view, this will mean a shift to value uh, uh, and uh, to essentials of the persons which uh, uh, are living in most countries. Uh, another important thing that I consider that will be a behavioral change in the post pandemic times will be the uh, approach of the governments related to making the equilibrium between these two issues. Before the pandemics, especially in the European Union, we were talking always about limiting the public deficits. 
after this uh, crazy pandemic came upon us, uh, all the governments faced a lot of expenditure because they had to cover in a form an, uh, or another the, the, the needs that the people had. There was also the other problem that the revenues, the income of the government budgets were falling down because the lockdown of the economy. So in the future, in the medium term future, I think the pandemic will change the behavior of the governments too in the sense that the governments will must and will have to accept higher deficits because actually a deficit of a budget means an investment in a country. Uh, finally, those money uh, do not disappear, but they are under a form or another in a circuit inside the economy of a country. This, I think, will be another change which actually will start from the needs of the persons and will be uh, reversed in the behavior of the governments in the post-pandemic times. So you see a lot of pressure on on government uh, on, on governments to change fundamental uh, fundamentals um, and, and the way they're they're doing things the the way they're prioritizing absolutely, absolutely. essentially yeah okay wow. yeah w w would you agree with that um, Carsten? One more time, please. Uh, the, uh, so, so what what Shibrian just said, I, I think, was very interesting. That basically, um, the, the this pandemic is going to create more pressure on on governments to change the way they're prioritizing um, pretty much everything. Um, is do you do you feel that sort of pressure um, uh, for more fundamental change that's coming from consumers as well? Um, and, and directed against governments? Uh, well, if you see it here in the green lending context, uh, one of the major things that the government of Green has done is uh, to ensure that there is a cash flow in, uh, in the community of the, the green lending population. But it, I can also see it's very hard for the uh, public budget. So it's very much under pr uh, pressure. So I think that they... Uh, all government have to rethink the way that uh, we have to uh, plan for the future and how the economics uh, are, are constructed. Uh, and Rick, you, you said before, it's very interesting in that line, that in Berlin, uh, it's they, they, people are going back to like a n more normal pre-COVID-19 behavior. Uh, the, I've been in Denmark uh, last month and in June. And I can see also that uh, development, that people are trying to go back to normal. But I think that um, it's, uh, it's, it's very concerning. And also, will the government have to take uh, responsibility uh, uh, and uh, take measures for, for ensure that uh, that's not the, uh, be the case in the future? That could be also in legislation, but also in how they are managing the financial future. Yeah. So governments are going to have to intervene more uh, to to try to get us through this pandemic, um, but then also to decide how we're going to what, what kind of society are we going to have after this pandemic. Sunday, um, to 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 what extent does that kind of you know um, echo thoughts that are being raised in in Switzerland? Um, is that this idea that um, that we need governments to 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 enforce some of the changes we're talking about is that something that's being discussed? Yes, I think not only in Switzerland; it's all over. But here in Switzerland, yes, the government said something some few few days ago and some we weeks ago. They, I had one of the head of the government coming out to say, "Look, folks, we are sorry. This pandemic came." in a such a fast speed that we have to act. And while we're acting, we make mistakes because we don't want to be blamed that we are left, we didn't act. And while we're acting, we made a mistake. So as you are saying, we have to forgive the government also because they're in also in a state of confusion. They were caught on where, on aware because nobody's perfect. Nobody knows the effect of this pandemic. I would rather say the countries in Africa who has got the Ebola before, they are more prepared, they are well prepared of this virus because they have the other side of Ebola before, they knew how it works, they knew how to wash their hands because I was there in Syria alone. 
every 500 meters you have to wash your hand so they're used to that so one thing i notice here is the government now is trying to wake up they're waking it up because all their focus is how to stop this pandemic how to stop this so that it will not spread now their focus is just like this so now they're coming back now so as you said cyprian uh, now the diversity of their focus now should be spread this way so that they can provide the measures should be spread so that they can develop a system a system that will help the whole sectors not only the uh, financial sectors not the auto automobile sectors also the farmers farmers the teachers Look at people playing in the stadium without without fans. It's also a sickness. It's a big sickness. It's 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 just uh, crazy, as you said before. So one thing I think is the government need also help help from the masses also because this is not a one man show. We have to come together, put our heads together, and try to bring up something to help also so that we give also advice the government are ready to take advices from us also they said it they said people should come up with with ideas that can help the society so but they have to implement this and also make sure that as you said cash flow in greenland is very very important the cash flow because the money is there so they should try to help because you see now consumers are not only confused they are afraid the mentality the shopping mentality is totally different people want to go shopping without meeting other people it's not possible we don't live in space because i saw some people the moment they saw you coming in the in the in the marketplace they try to go away from you especially the elderly ones which i, I found is it's really not good so the the one thing i want i would like to say is the government has to come up with a plan they should drop up a plan by inviting the masses, the, the, the people, to give also ideas. Because when we join these ideas together, we will come up with a solid solution. That's my point about this. Okay. Well, thanks so much. I, I think that, that was a really interesting point, especially about... Um, you know what kind of impact it has on ordinary consumers uh, in, and how that's sort of changing their lives in, in such fundamental ways, especially for elderly people and, um, and others who aren't being served by the alternatives we've created, such as, you know, for instance, digital uh, platforms or, or aren't being able to easily access them. And I think, um, you know, I, we only had 45 minutes and we're actually approaching the end pretty much now. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure we, we could talk about this for hours because it's such a, such a fascinating um, topic. But before we leave you, um, I, I think I would like to ask you what you miss personally most about um, pre-pandemic consumer life personally. Uh, is it, I, I guess, traveling, tourism is probably going to be high up on this list, but what is the thing you don't want to change after this pandemic is over? What would you like to have back um, without changes? Um, Carson, <laughs> would you like to start? Yeah, well, it's, it's a big question, uh, but, but I think that um, we had learned a lot about, uh, after COVID-19. We, we uh, have learned that we um, will have to appreciate something that we have perhaps forgotten. Uh, but also we, we have to, as Sunday said before, I'm very uh, agree with Sunday that to say, well, the government make mistakes and it's important that they make mistakes. It's also an expression that they are doing something, then nothing. It's very important. But uh, what I'm taking from this is uh, that uh, more time, with your family, <laughs> we, 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 are, we are getting more focus on uh, what's important in life. That, that, was, that was great. Uh, Ciprian? In my case, it's very clear that most I miss uh, from the pre-pandemic uh, life is the traveling. Uh, as I explained to you, I traveled a lot in many, many countries and I represented companies and this is something that I really miss and I'm hardly waiting to be able again to travel wherever I want 
uh, in, in each country I would like. Okay, great. And Sunday? <laughs> yeah, for me, it's only one, thing, uh, one or two things. Sport. We want to get all those stadiums filled with supporters because it's 30% of your, of your, <laughs> of your success. And uh, I just want to go back to the stadium. I want people to, to go back to their normal life. Actually, the normal life will be very difficult, but we have to start it, as you said, Nick, that people are getting back to normal because people are fed up. They just want to do go back to their normal life. So I want to go back to stadium, to watch football, to do the normal things I've been doing before, even if it is hard just to go and do that. Traveling, yes, uh, I, actually it's not really affected with this COVID, but I will also love to go to, to travel to Africa again to see my people. And uh, I want everybody also to, to, to do that in their own uh, uh, private time, free time also. Yeah, that's, uh, you're probably not the only one there. Well, thanks so much for uh, for joining us tonight. That was great. Um, and I, I think we we have quite a lot of takeaways, um, in, including, you know, the fact that there is actually optimism that there might be some positive changes out of this um, in, in terms of consumer behavior and uh, to what extent we are aware uh, of, of the things we had and um, how valuable they, they sometimes can be or, um, you know, uh, to what extent they're worth preserving. So I think that's, that's definitely a big takeaway from tonight. And I would like to thank all of you. Um, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to thank you for here. the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks Great. so much. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Great Take pleasure. Care. Bye. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Bye for now, Carson. So I'm still here. I can see you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, okay. <laughs> Searching the oh, area. Great. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so thank you very much. It was great. Yeah, Have it was great. Okay. See great. You. Great. Hey, right. I, I will try to 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 try to text you both. Please, please, please. Yeah, uh, I'll try to text you both. So uh, maybe we can exchange uh, some. Rick has also my my phone number, and please ask him, and we 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 should keep in touch. Okay. Yes. Uh, how do I have that? You don't have Rick's phone? I have Rick's phone, yes. Call him and uh, uh, Rick, can you hear? I think he is on mute. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. So Okay, I, I will send in an email to get yeah. your contact from okay. both of you, and uh, I will ask him to give, okay. uh, give you also mine. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. So, so that we stay, so that we stay in I contact. Think we can yeah. get a unique opportunity with this very, very different way of looking at things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that will be fine. That's great. Yes. Okay. That's great. Okay. 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 I think Rick is here again. <laughs> it's but his his microphone is is not is is out. Yes. Yes. But I would I would I will write him so I can have your contact and then. I will also tell him to pass over my contact. Or oh, when I write you, anyway, you have my contact. Okay, it's perfect. Yes. Like it's a great pleasure having you guys. Yes, it's a pleasure. Yes. Bye great. bye. Bye bye for now. Bye. 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 bye.